everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Mysterious Pals. My name is Chris, and with me tonight, the Sultan of the Ragtime. His name is Jordan. Jordan, welcome back, baby. Good to be here, baby cakes. <laughs> Pumpkin. What do you got today for us? We're, we're going to talk about some scary stuff here in the show. Thank you for joining us. We're going to jump right in with something spooky, I think. I'm not sure what it is. Pretty spooky, yeah. The mystery, nonetheless. Jordan. Is. Well, I'm so glad you axed, Chris. Who? Wait, what? I'm so glad you axed. Oh, like a like a like a like an axe. Bingo bango. This week we're gonna start off with a little nursery rhyme. <sighs> Is that nice? I nice. don't know. <laughs> Is that nice? Is, so, aren't nursery rhymes all like about evil dead stuff? Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? It's a quick one. <laughs> the nursery rhyme. Okay. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother forty wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father forty one. You ever hear that before? I heard always something about uh, Lizzie Borden, but it was from The Simpsons, and it was Treehouse of Horrors, and oh, yeah. Millhouse dressed up as... I forgot about that. He's like, 40 wax of the wet noodle, Bart. <laughs> I think that's what he said. <laughs> Is that what he said? The wet noodle? <laughs> yeah. I think that's what he said. <laughs> so Lizzie Borden this week. Lizzie Borden. Is that a mystery? There's like, she murdered people, right? Yeah, but there's like speculation whether she did or didn't actually do it. This is, this is uh, hot off the presses. <laughs> Never been done before. Yeah. Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden. On August 4th, 1892, in Fall River, Massachusetts, United States, Andrew and Abby Borden were brutally murdered at home in the early afternoon. The prime suspect who was put on trial and eventually quitted was her daughter, Lizzie. This is one of America's most prolific murders. Yeah, what year was this? 1892. 1892? Isn't that when... Um Sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> yeah, this is not when Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> Four hundred years earlier, fourteen ninety two. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, I thought it was like seventeen seventy six something. Fourteen ninety two. That's an, is that nursery rhyme too? Yeah, fourteen ninety two. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait Nina a second. Am I, wrong? Am I wrong about this? Yeah, fourteen ninety two. Was that the Nina Pinta Santa Maria? Yeah, I think one of those, apparently one of those ships weren't actually named that, though. Was that the, or was it the Pilgrims? What did the Pilgrims come over? They came over on the Plymouth Rock. Yeah. That was like six. On the, on the Plymouth Rock? Yeah, they, came, they floated on a rock. No, was the boat called the rock, the Plymouth Rock? No. Okay. What, what did they sail over on? Some ships. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they come over? Why did they come over? Uh, they were trying to um, escape religious persecution. Okay. Well, good for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh. this week we're going to hack away at this case to see if Lizzie really did commit murder. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs> That's it. We'll we're see done. You. Hack away. What the? <laughs> so this is the whole episode. Is, or the whole question here is, did Lizzie actually chop up her parents? Yeah. How old was Lizzie? She was 32 when this happened. What? No, no. Mm-hmm. Why do they always portray her as like a little chi- little kid? I don't know. I never actually. What, what do you mean? How, why do they always portray her as a little kid? Like whenever you hear about the story, it's like they always say like it always gives the thing that like she's like was a child. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know. I I do know that they. Some people are like, oh, she's a woman. That means she she's, she can't do anything. She possibly now, yeah. couldn't do this. She I, must have been a child. Then. That comes yeah. up later. Yeah. Wait, so she was 32 years old? 32 years old, yeah. First off, what's she still doing at home? She's almost dead. 32 in, in 1892? <laughs> that was like 76 now. I, well, I mean, her dad was like, I think, 70. Well, he was almost I mean, What's the <laughs> difference? What are we arguing here? She probably did or she did. She's she doing did him a, a favor. favor. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she did or someone else did him a favor. What the hell? So let's go a little bit 32? About, what's yeah. she still doing living at home? So that that's another thing, too. Like, her older sister's living at home, too. And her older sister's like 41, I think. Wait, wait, wait. Now, I'm not saying this because I think you have to move out and whatever. Like, at this day and time, like, I'm talking about in 1892, the way society was. Yeah, it, she, they would have you're married, been, at, married off, yeah. At 16, and you're, like, having <laughs> kids by 20. would that young, but, yeah, you're, you're already gone out of the house. Yeah. So that comes up a little bit later. We might as well just say it now. So I guess 
Well, I also want to say this. Stay home as long as you can't bleed those parents <laughs> yeah, dry yeah. because living not you at home, home for free. Sucks. I did that for a long yeah, time. Hell yeah. You bleed them dry. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> anyway. So she was that becomes a, that, that comes up because like you said, they should have already been married. Should have already started a life, had kids. That was kind of the thing back then. But apparently every suitor she might have had was hacked said, up by an axe. <laughs> Was not good enough, according okay. to, her, to her father. Okay. Let's go to the background, family background. Andrew Jackson Borden, this is the, the father, he came from a wealthy family. By the time of the murders, his family owned a majority of Fall River. This is where this, they lived and this all happened. So his family was very wealthy. They already owned much of this area. Were they grocers? No. <laughs> a lot, apparently, a lot of people got hacked up by, by yeah. because of grocers. Hey, what was that? Was that the, uh, the Axeman of New Orleans? Yeah. Yeah. Episode, whatever in the past, <laughs> Axeman of New Orleans, yeah. another axe murdering thing. Despite coming from a wealthy family, he was raised modestly. This is Andrew, the father. In fact, when he came into his own, and became somewhat wealthy in his own right. He continued to live modestly and was known to be frugal. The way he, well, how did they make money? He said they owned a town. They owned like so. A lot of it was textile mills. Okay. Oh, that'll do you. Yeah. yeah. But he's, he's frugal. So much so he never updated his home to have indoor plumbing or electricity. Oh, God. His frugalness apparently made him unliked by some and became a point of contention with his daughter Lizzie later on. Wait, wait. She, she hacked him up because he wouldn't get plumbing. We don't know if she that, No, up. I'm not blaming her. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind yeah. of agreeing with her. I don't want to go out in the outhouse and there's crap yeah. in a hole. Yeah. There's like spiders in there and like, you Ooh, know. Oh, yeah, no. Andrew started out as a carpenter. The guy who did his own... Not necessarily like a made man, but like he started as a apprentice as, as a carpenter. He eventually established an undertaker business and provided cheap, affordable caskets. Well, really? The irony of that. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's a really good idea. Yeah. Back then, nowadays, it's right. probably way more difficult. He later grew into wealth through property development and became the director of several textile mills in Fall River. Fall River became very affluent for some with the rise of the textile mills. And it's reflected the rest of America. Textiles were... was huge. Yeah. Is that another thing that like, was like a giant industry that crashed? Okay. Uh, I don't know if it crashed, but like it definitely didn't... Probably got sus- more... Sustain- it wasn't sustainable. Because it probably got more like efficient. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like more, less people needed. Yep. So this is during the Gilded Age when industrial growth boomed and there was a mass economic growth in the U.S., but also growth and disparity between the wealthy and everyone else. In fact, there was a part of town called the Hill where the wealthiest lived. And there's a hill in like every town. Yeah. And we have a hill in our city. It's like you see it and you're just like, ah, oh, you kind of like look you at it. You call it, it like, the hill. Yeah. You're like, yeah. But you like, in case with like Lizzie, like her rest of her family, like her dad's side of the family lived up there. And she was like, look at it. Like someday I, someday I want to live up there. Someday I want to hack those people apart <laughs> with an axe because they probably have toilets. Yeah. So the fact that they didn't live on the hill with the rest of Andrew's like family. Is another point of contention being Lizzie's father. Andrew, during his own growth and wealth, married Sarah Anthony Morse on December 25th, 1845. That was Lizzie's mom. Sarah. But okay. remember, like, Andrew was killed with his wife, Abby. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The little hound dog. So Sarah. Boots. <laughs> and Andrew would go and have three children. Emma Lenora in 1851. Alice Esther in 1856. And Lizzie in 1860. That's a big, pretty big, like, jump. 51 to 56, and then 56 to 60. 51 to 56. And 56 to 60. That's not that bad. I mean, your family's a lot closer together. Yeah. But I'm not. Like, That's my true, family's yeah. six years. And nine years. Oh, yeah, yeah. With my brother. Yeah. So, not that big a deal, dog. <laughs> Maybe you're just a weirdo. <laughs> I mean, my dad's, like, one of nine. Yeah. And he When he was born, his, like, oldest brother was at war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. in Korea or something. That's the thing. Like, then people weren't people just pumping out kids back then? I mean, you had to. How, how, how would you get anything done? Unfortunately, though, Alice died from hydrocephalus. Wait, 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 wait. hydro what? Cephalus? Is that why they didn't have indoor plumbing? Because it was something hydra. Hydro. Well, it was too much fluid in the brain, apparently. Oh. Okay. You just shot to Oh, too. okay. But that was before Lizzie was even born. So there's the this... hydrocephalitis. Yeah, hydrocephalus, I want to say. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. In doubling down on the unfortunate events, Sarah went on to die in 1863. Muterine congestion and spinal disease 
age of 39. At this point, Lizzie was two, two and a half years old and Emma was 12. Emma made a promise to her mother that she'd always look after Lizzie. Okay. That's why she didn't leave? Mm-hmm. Okay. But, I mean, that could be... Is this like an evil stepmother story? So a lot of, that's what a lot of people said. Like, the stepmother, like, they got, at least within the newspapers, again, like, I think this is around yellow journalism. Is this kind of when it started? Because we yeah, thought it was that's when the before. airships were around this time. Yeah. So they sensationalized a lot of stuff. So maybe I think, at least in the media, and a lot of people bought into this, was that the mom was seen as, like, evil stepmother kind of situation. Yeah. It sounds exactly what it is. It's like yeah. a Disney movie. And so the older sister was like, I'll protect Lizzie. That could mean certain them. implications as well. Ooh, the tangled web. <laughs> Andrew would eventually marry in 1865 to Abby Durf, Durfee. <laughs> to Abby Gray. Abby Gray. Okay. That's only, I think it was only three years later after the mom died. Man, it's three years. Plus, he's a wealthy guy. I'm sure people were knocking down his door. Of course, yeah. The sisters would live with their father and stepmother well into adulthood. The four all lived in a three-story house along with a 26-year-old family servant, Bridget Maggie Sullivan, who was an Irish immigrant. And no one had toilets or electricity. In the house, no. What is going on? Lizzie was 32 when her parents were murdered and was 41. They an Irish immigrant servant. And this is kind of like a weird... I don't want to say a weird thing, but like, I'll go into this later because we've talked about this a bunch before when like immigration was happening in various times throughout history and the, especially in the United States. We've talked about this. Oh, some of these people were look, looked down upon and like lesser than this immigrants, kind of, you mean, or like the Irish? Civilian? Irish immigrants that we've talked about a lot of other oh, like, classes yeah. of people. Italian. And like, yes. like, was it good? Yeah. So basically, just anybody that was British and white was cool, <laughs> yeah. up, pretty much. Well, I mean, in, like, this, in these stories, that's the thing, though, because like here, like they're like, "Oh, we're natives," but like, you're not. You're not exactly. No, yeah, you're the immigrant, right? And this becomes an issue later on with Italians and Polish people and today. Um, today, <laughs> today. Yes, yes. This is kind of weird that this keeps coming up in the history. People don't like change, right? Yes. Especially whenever it could threaten them. Yes. And this is the case definitely with a uh, bunch of the. Um, Irish immigrants that were coming in because they got blamed for a lot of stuff. Lizzie was very active in the temperance union. This is the whole movement where people thought that alcoholism was destroying the family home, made people immoral. Oh, Irish got kind of, Irish kind of got like, is that where that whole thing comes from? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So the, which, which led to like the prohibition. Okay. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. Yeah. So she's involved in that. She's very involved in her church. She was a Protestant. And she's actually uh, a Sunday school teacher. So she seemed like a person of good standing. Emma, on the other hand, did none of these things. And she rarely left the house. You know, there was a 2014 movie with Christina Ricci. Yeah, I saw that when I was... Lizzie I, Borden took never an knew. <laughs> She's great. I was a big fan of her back when... Casper? Yeah. <laughs> God, is that it? Is that it for our kids? Our, like people our age? That was, that was the, the stepping stone? Yeah, and then she, yeah, Casper, yeah, not so much in maybe Adam's family. She didn't do it for me, Adam's family, because that was weird. That was, that was, that was earlier. Yeah. It was Casper. Oh, man, yeah. Because it was that right age of like where we were like that age. She was like our, our pretty much yeah. same age. It's been said that Emma and Lizzie never liked their stepmother, Abby, this evil stepmother kind of thing. So much so they wouldn't eat meals with her and only refer to her as Mrs. Borden, not mom. Oh, why would you call her mom? She's not your mom. I mean, they probably were still probably pretty you know, upset about the mom dying. Like, sure. like yeah. her dad, their dad remarrying. Yeah. But at this point they've been living with her. So Lizzie was two and a half. Emma was 12 when the mom died. They were she three years later. Five. Yes. Yeah, so they married three years later. So they've been with this woman for 30 something years at this point. But that lady long as she was with her mom. Yeah. So you think at some point they've been like mom, maybe. Or at least by a first name. Yeah. Right. They did call her Mrs. Borden. Maybe she sucked. Maybe she was just like a that's, terrible That's the thing. So I've seen, I've seen conflicting things either like she actually was a cold. Like the mom from So White. Yeah. No White. Other people have said like she's actually probably the nicest person in the, in, the, in the whole household. Like she's actually like warm and like outgoing and kind. But it's kind and of those, as soon as the door shut, she smacks him in the well, face. Well, it's, yeah, it's a lot of those he said, she said kind of things. This would be a, a, an ongoing theme throughout this. Furthermore, it's also been said that Emma and Lizzie were worried that Abby and her family were looking to take their father's money. 
This was evident when Andrew gifted Abby and her sister, Abby's sister, a nice chunk of his real estate. I guess Lizzie and Emma are upset by that because they're like, one, like, don't help his family out. It's not. They're giving away their their money. Also, that's our inheritance. Yeah, they're giving it away to someone that's not directly re- like right. Her family. They probably think the whole family's trying to get their money. Yes, that that became a kind of an ongoing thing here. In July of eighteen ninety two, as a result of a family argument, assuming it had probably something to do with Abby, Lizzie and Emma left Fall River and vacationed in New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is fourteen miles away. They would return a week later before the murders, but Lizzie didn't return home right away. Why didn't she? Instead, she stayed at a hotel for four days, then returned to the house. Sharpening her axe. <laughs> so, all right. So, w- w- as of right now, what do you think is going on? About money. It's always about money. Lizzie and her sister were like... You think they both had something to do with this? Yeah. Okay. I think they were both like, hey, those bitches are stealing our money, <laughs> and they think they're getting dad's money. They can go to hell, and they probably... It's probably one of those things, mm-hmm. like... Like the Mean Girls movie. Mean Girls movie. Well, they didn't murder, but they just like <laughs> they didn't murder in the movie. Oh, yeah, they, made that, they made that book. Yeah, they probably burn booked her mom, like Abby. But I think, the, I think thing, like, the mom nor the dad can defend themselves. So it's like it's all only they're saying like possibly what they're saying is like she was a bad woman. She's trying to take her money, take advantage of her father. But like, what would the mom had Abby would have said like about the girls? Maybe maybe she's like they're lazy. They don't. She probably was. You know, was it one of those things where like. I bet you she's telling dad to give away the money so we don't get it type of thing. Yeah. Maybe. Or, or, I mean, they're in their 30s and 40s. Maybe they're probably like, hey, stop giving them money so they leave. Yeah. Because right, yeah. they're in their 30s and yeah. 40s. Maybe they left because their, Abby and their dad was like, dude. Get out. <laughs> you guys got to the end of the month to find a place to get yeah. the hell out of here. Yeah. And Abby was like, yes, you do, lady. And then ladies. And then that probably set it off. And then they probably went away. Yeah. But apparently, though, like n- no suitor for Lizzie was was um well liked by her, her dad. Well, the, I don't think that really matters. So, 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 like, why would he say get out of the house? Because the mom, the Abby, was probably like, "Hey, what was his name again?" Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Like, no one was good hey, enough. Andy, for can you uh, <laughs> Andy. get them the hell out of the house? <laughs> it's been thirty years. Yeah, they're in their thirties and forties. <laughs> and you know, he probably, st- I mean, he cannot like any guy that's going after his daughters. Right. Okay, there's two things that happened. I totally believe these two, both of these could be true. The girls murdered them with axes because they were, they didn't want their money getting given away. And they're already, I mean, they're in their 70s, doing them a favor. They're right. probably like, well, I don't want to take care of them. Yeah, I think the mom, or the stepmom was in her 60s, the dad was like seven. Yeah, because if, if maybe her da- their dad was like going to die soon, maybe he was like, <laughs> like, but I'm saying like maybe he was Put sick. Put him out of his misery. Yeah. So but she no. chopped him in the face? No, I'm saying maybe the stepdad, or the dad, was, you know, like maybe he was sick and they're like, he's going to die soon. And if he dies first, Abby's going to get all his money. But if we kill Abby, get her out of the picture, when he dies, we get everything. So they go kill Abby, but he walks in and they're like, damn it, I right. have to chop his face off. And that's where the whole thing came I think from. That, that, that's, that's one of the theories is like, they didn't like her. They thought she was, her and her family were going to take the money from them or just taking advantage of their dad. Plus, they lose their inheritance, so that's maybe they, yeah. somebody, or Emma, or both of them, lost it and just like chopped the stepmom up. You ever see? Um, but why would the dad be dead then? You ever see Matilda? Yeah, that's what happened, to Matilda, with the do- with the teacher. Her parents, her parents got murdered no, by no, that no, the teacher. Oh, yep, yep. Her dad died, and they found yep. you know Mrs. Trunchbull did yep. it, but like she got all she got everything because the girl was underage. Yeah, and then she kept everything. So like, same type of situation. But, or, here's the other thing, or, <laughs> this really was just a random act. Maybe someone was tr- got fired from the factory, or someone wanted money, or was looking for money, came in, murdered them. Ooh, I'm glad you brought that up, Chris, because that will be coming up very shortly. Yeah, see, again, say this every episode. <laughs> Big Daddy can <laughs> will solve all these problems. I'm like that. Send him back in time. Yeah, I'm like the guy on the telephone booth we talked about recently. Captain Marvel or Captain Bill and Ted. Oh no, Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who. <laughs> that guy. But I'm like better looking. I don't know. Yeah, I never seen it. <laughs> Probably better looking. <laughs> Wait, was Benner, Benner, Benedict Cumberbatch one of those guys? I think he was. Yeah. Oh, um, better. Look. Yeah, the show's been on since like he's just taller than me. Fifties or sixties. There's been a bunch of. Oh them. God. 
That sounds terrible. There's a wo- I think there's a woman one now. Okay, maybe I'm not the hottest one. I don't know what she looks like. As I said earlier, Lizzie was the one who was eventually arrested for this. But she was the one who was involved in the community and was seen as upstanding. Emma was not involved, and there's a whole thing where she promised her mom she'd always look after Lizzie. You think Lizzie was arrested? I mean, would they, how did they arrest her? Why didn't they arrest both of them? How did they figure it was her? How did the cops going to be like, it was her? Yeah. What, what was she like, cleaning an axe? And they were like, oh, it's probably her. <laughs> Actually, there was, there's like, I don't know, like, I mean, you probably know the story, but like going through this, I was like, are you kidding me? How do you not guys realize he probably did this? But. Probably can't prove it. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's the big thing that comes up. Several days before the murders, the Borden household became violently ill. Some thought it was just food poisoning. Well, Abby feared it was actual poison because. Her husband, Andrew, was not very well liked by some people. Apparently, Emma was gone again. I've seen, seen conflicting things where, like, so, like I said earlier, Lizzie and Emma left. They came back. Lizzie stayed in a hotel for four nights. But Emma's gone again. So she calls a doctor, Dr. C. Barry Bowen, for the residence on August 3rd. Again, this is the day before the murders. Dr. Bowen, looking over Abby, attributed the illness to bad food. You know, these bad food they kept. He got some mutton. They kept eating mutton for like every meal because they kept getting sick. And they probably they kept ha- eating it the next day too. But they probably didn't have they didn't have electricity, so they didn't have a they didn't have any way of keeping it cool, right? I'm sure they did. They could put it like they had a cellar oh, or a basement. Okay. Yeah. But still cure it. It's not gonna be that cold in a basement. Right. I mean we're in my basement right now. Also, it's that August. Cold. And apparently like this is like it was apparently like, gross and like super humid, sticky day too. Okay, they got food poisoning. Right. Yeah. There's no, there's no way around it. Plus, yeah, the doctor's like, yeah, you just got bad food. Food poisoning. And when he offered to examine the rest of the family, Andrew became upset, not wanting to pay any more money, so he told the doctor to leave. Nice. Good job. But <laughs> it seems like we got sick. It's right. over. But they ate the next day. They ate the food again the next day. <laughs> they get sick again? Yeah. On the evening of August 3rd, John Morse, the younger brother of Sarah Morse Borden, arrived unannounced. This is the Lizzie and Emma's maternal uncle. Morse had recently reconnected with his nieces after a long absence. Morse was apparently there to discuss business matters with Andrew. Speculations arose about property transfer discussions exacerbating tensions. A lot of people speculate that they were having a fight over property and something that might be like owed to Abby's family. So he probably promised Sarah's family land, maybe, or something. Or I would assume right? so, yeah. Or to like to take care of them too, maybe since she died. That guy, Sarah's brother, John, yeah, probably had a vendetta against. Like, say, hey, you're not gonna give us what we owed. You told us we we're gonna. We maybe they're kicking them off. Like, we don't know. And that you are exactly that. That's all been speculated. Like, why? So he was. He would come by the house. It was only apparently in the past two years he started reconnecting with uh, Lizzie and Emma. For some reason, a lot of people were speculating he came over that night stayed because he wanted to discuss some kind of business matter with Andrew. It's been speculated again, even more so like, was it like, Hey, that we're going to do this business endeavor together. Or like, it's a matter of you owe us something or I'm owed something. So there might've been an argument. People were saying it might've happened. But either yeah, way, I agree. either way, John spent the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the upstairs bedroom, second floor. Cause three this, story house. Is this, the, is there murdering going on the next day? Oh, nice. So any, anything change? Insulting. Anything change for you yet? As far as what you think happened? Is we're going to we're next go on the day of the murder. I mean, other than okay, here's another suspect. Sure. I still think I'm still leaning towards Abby. What, what about the Irish immigrant servant? They didn't think too fondly of the Irish. No. <laughs> Can you really, really blame really, them? Like, <laughs> so we're, all right, this is the day of the murders, August fourth, eighteen ninety two. Who all's in this house at this point? We got Andrew, the dad, who dies. Abby, the stepmother, dies. Maggie, who's the Irish, uh, their servant. Did she die? She does not. Okay. Lizzie and her uncle John. Emma, however, was out of town. She's 15 miles away in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. And that's proven. Proven, yeah. So Emma, not there. Oh, okay. I thought she was there. All right. That's, that's, anyways, that's the thing. So they said they, her and Emma left after a dispute and they came back. Sometime later, 
the timeline said like they both came back. And then Lizzie stayed for in a hotel for another four days. Then came back to the house, and then the murders happened. But now they're I don't know, a lot of conflicting things. So either Emma never went away when Lizzie did, or she came back and then was like, "I'm leaving again." So everyone has their own timeline of events. And they all kind of differ somewhat. So I'm not going to go through all of them. But if I found a website, one of the resources I used was called Lizzie Andrew Borum Virtual Museum and Library. It gives each person who's in this house their testimony of timeline of events and they all differ a little bit very, somewhat it gets very confusing so I'm, the following what i'm going to do is trying to be like more cohesive or probable understanding of what took place so we're going through a timeline of what happened yeah and then, like i said that like each of these people who are in this house that don't, don't die have varying timelines they don't always line up okay so it, this made this part made it kind of hard because so I'm, i try to come up based on the stories I found with a more cohesive timeline of what's going on overall with everybody involved. Probably not that great, but here we go. Again, Andrew's in the house, Abby's in the house, Maggie, Lizzie, and John. Emma's out of town. The morning around 7 a.m., everyone comes down and eats breakfast. Everyone's still sick. (laughs) (laughs) They still eat this mutton for breakfast, apparently. Could you imagine that? Because the bathroom's outside. Yeah. What, yeah, at, at one point, um, the poor, poor Maggie, because she doesn't, I don't, I don't think, I'm assuming she doesn't eat with them. At one point, in her, I was reading her timeline, she's like, at one point I went outside to puke and had to come back in and keep cleaning the windows. I was like, this poor lady. <laughs> but she didn't, she's just like, they're still sick. Well, they're still eating the same food. Just yeah. keep preparing it in different ways. Deserved, this guy deserved to die. <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> Around 7 a.m., everyone's downstairs eating breakfast. Not including the servant or Emma, because servants right. can't eat with you know, can't eat with with the people and Emma's out of town. She's barfing outside, yeah. Yeah. Around seven forty five AM, everyone begins to go about their day. John and Andrew go to the sitting room to talk about for about an hour. John leaves the board and home at eight forty eight AM to purchase goods and visit Emma in Fairhaven. Again, this is fifteen miles away, I believe. But he plans on being back in time for lunch around noon. This is John? Yeah, the uncle. He's hanging around a little too much. This is weird. That, yeah, like the fact that they, especially they showed up unannounced. It was like, hey, I'm gonna stay Take here. Night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe that's what they come did back, back for lunch. Then. Yeah, was, I wouldn't like that. I would like. Do you gotta tell know. me? You gotta tell me you're coming. I'm like you coming over here yeah, once every other week. Give me a time you're coming. I'm giving you a time when you're leaving. <laughs> We're done. Yeah, I don't like you coming over here. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> you and stayed. We're, like, We're doing a podcast it. together. Yeah. yeah, the two hours you're here, I could blow my brains out. Anyway. <laughs> Great. Andrew leaves for his usual morning walk around 9 a.m. Usual mo- meaning walk. You just morning go. Walk. You can just do that when you have money. I'm going to go for a walk. I mean, you do that now. You don't have, to have money for that. Yeah, but he's, he's, not, he's not going to work. No. People are going to work around this time. What time is it? 9 a.m. And he actually comes back later to take a nap. <laughs> he's 70 some years old. Yeah, good, that's a good point. Sometime between 9 a.m. and 10 30 a.m., Abby goes upstairs to clean the guest room where John was staying. This is a chore usually done by Emma and Lizzie, but Emma's out of town. Where was Lizzie? Okay, so Emma, not there. Who, whose timeline is this? This is. I'm trying to do the most cohesive one. Okay, but like this, this is a is, combination of. Yeah, I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying. So between 9 a.m. and 10:30 a.m., that's a big window. Abby goes upstairs to clean the guest room. This is on the second floor. This is the room that John stayed in. Emma's out of town. Lizzie, I don't know why she just didn't do it. Lizzie was reportedly in the dining room ironing while Maggie was washing windows. During that time frame, while Abby's upstairs in the guest room, she's murdered. She's struck in the head around 18 times with a hatchet-like tool. Obviously, she dies. It's later believed that the first blow she received happened when she was facing her murderer. The other 17 were on the back of her head. So the, the police, again, when I say it's later believed, the police and the investigators, the way the first hit in her head landed, she was facing her murderer. Because when she fell... She's facing, she's laid down, and the rest of the 17 whacks to her head were in the back of her head. Here's what I'm thinking now. Emma is an alibi for John. Oh, all right. It was, they were all in on it to get the money. Maybe. Because he came back in town to I mean, get money. He was, I mean, Emma, John. Oh, I'll he, take care of your dad they were for all you. Su- they were all suspects at one point. When they were in Bedford, they were meeting, talking. 
Yeah. This or, they, or they might not have actually been in Bedford. Like, well, that's what I mean. Like yeah, when they, they were, they were like gone. They were meeting. Bedford. Yeah. Emma stayed somewhere for an alibi. Okay. See, I got this all. See? <laughs> You're welcome, America. Boom. You're welcome, Massachusetts. Andrew returns home around 10.30 a.m. His key fails to open the front door. What? Odd. It fails? What does that mean? After he knocks, Maggie goes to in, but sees the door is jammed. Okay. Someone jammed the door. From the inside. Yeah. That makes sense. Maggie will later say she heard Lizzie laughing right after this, this, this instance where she couldn't get uh, Andrew in, in, in the house. Because she heard Lizzie laughing from the top of the stairs, although she didn't actually see her. This is true. That means Lizzie would have been upstairs around the time of Abby's murder. Now, there's contradicting stories, like I said earlier, with all this stuff going on in the timelines. Then by Lizzie herself, she keeps, and later on, she keeps contradicting where she was when all this is going on, which makes her seem vicious. vicious. But at one point, Lizzie's downstairs and accompanied Andrew to the sitting room couch, where she helped remove his boots to nap. Maggie helps him remove his, remove his boots? Lizzie does. Oh, Lizzie does. But in the crime scene pictures, he sells his boots on. Oh, she's guilty. And interesting. At one point when she's there they're in the sitting room, Andrew apparently asked Lizzie where Abby was. Abby would have already been dead. Andrew's not dead yet. They're in this window. Lizzie says. She split. <laughs> well, you bring up split. So Lizzie, Lizzie says, this is according to Lizzie. A letter, like a, what are those? A messenger came by okay. with a letter for yep. Abby saying that a friend of Abby was sick and Abby had to go see her. Did she, Lizzie said this? Lizzie said this. Said that Lizzie said this. Lizzie did. Oh, okay. But apparently, there's no record of a sick friend of Abby's or no letter was ever found. Right. It, that, was a, that was a lie. Yep. Around 11, 10 a.m., Maggie's on the third floor of the attic in her room attempting to nap. She hears Lizzie yell. Maggie, come quick. Father's dead. Somebody came in and killed him. Wait, Maggie gets a nap? Well, she's she been vomiting, cleaning. Well, yeah, but she's a, a servant. She shouldn't be napping on the job. That's probably why they died. <laughs> God. Andrew was slumped down, lying on the couch. He'd been struck in the face 10 to 11 times with a hatchet-like tool. One of his eyes was split in half. His yeah, face was, a- was un- unrecognizable. Wait, so how do they know Abby died first? Good question, Chris. They were at this point, it's either Maggie or a friend of um or a friend of Lizzie's who Lizzie calls over, discovers Abby, Abby's body in the guest room. Lizzie claims that the door is closed. Maggie and Lizzie's f- friend, I can't remember who it was, claimed the door was open. That's how they were to see. When Maggie's come downstairs. She sees into a room and sees Abby's dead. How come she didn't see it when she went up? Lizzie claims the door was closed. Okay. The police, de- so they call the police. Police determined that Abby died around 930. Her body was cold compared to Andrews, who was still warm when they arrived. They determined his time of death was around 11 a.m. Okay. Was he covered up? Maybe he was all warm and toasty when he got murdered. <laughs> no, he was not. Apparently, blood was like still oozing out of him. Okay. Investigators saw no forced entry, no signs of robbery or any kind of sexual assault. No stranger was seen coming in or out of the house. But John's during, not a stranger. During the times of death, right. Nor was Lizzie. Nor was the servant. And the only door that could have been unlocked was a side door. Wait, but, but I thought the front door was jammed. According to Maggie. Okay. During the time of Andrew's death, Lizzie claimed she was in the barn. And when they're talking to her, they're like, she keeps changing. Like, originally she heard noises going on. Then she's like, I couldn't hear anything in the barn. Do you think she's just, I don't want to say she's like overcome with like sorrow or something. But do you think she's not in the right frame of mind because of the mutton or vice versa? Like, if you're that sick, no, I'm not saying that's what caused her to to murder people. I'm saying like, maybe that's the reason why she can't remember crap or maybe Maggie can't. Like, it well, just seems like I'm glad you brought that up. Chris, you keep setting me up, man. I appreciate yeah. it. During police interviews with Lizzie, they noted how it, a calm and composed demeanor. Just odd considering her father and something were just chopped up. Brutally. Yeah. A family doctor later said, given her morphine to calm her nerves, possibly making her act in such a manner. 
Oh, before the police talk to her. Okay. Police admitted later on that they only did a quick sweep of Liz's room because Lizzie was feeling unwell. So they probably, it's so one of those things was like, just like, there's no she, way it was the, the yeah. girl. Like, she's, yeah. she's, she's unwell. She's a let's, woman. Let's leave her be. She couldn't possibly do this. The woman. She, she had the vapors. She couldn't so They didn't like go through her room like fi- trying to find any bloody weapon or bloody clothes. If she's unwell, let's leave her be. I mean, there had to be blood everywhere. It's like the, the, the police were baffled by the lack of blood found throughout the house, other than that, of course, on the victims. It's like it's like the Jack the Ripper thing, and like I say, once you see someone run, walking around, blood on them, like she would have to have blood everywhere, just like Jack the Ripper. It had to yep. be covered head. If yeah. she whacked them eight times, and it's the middle of the times. day. It's the middle of the day. One of, one of Lizzie's neighbors, right after it happened, Lizzie was talking to her neighbor, like, "Hey, some like my dad or someone was murdered." The neighbor apparently didn't see any blood on Lizzie whatsoever. So that's could have changed, but, but hold on. Changed. But that's the, she'd have to take a shower. Like her hair would have been. And there's with no that, plumbing. Right. With that much, like. That, that much blood. Brutality done. If you're just whacking someone once. She whacked her dad eight or her stepmom 18 times a dad to 10 to 11 times. And so she yelled for Maggie. There's no way she got changed. If he's still blood oozing mm-hmm. and warm, she got changed, washed herself up, then called Maggie down. It had to be John. Uncle John. Oh, all right. Because he ran out the back door. She locked it. It was all cahoots. <laughs> All cahoots. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're just like, there's no blood. You can't find any blood anywhere. Mm. But they did find a bucket of bloody rags in the cellar washroom and a speck of blood. One of Lizzie's undergarments or her unmentionables or her, what do you call them? Talk about them. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean that it's their blood. Lizzie's response to this when questioned was like, I was menstruating. So the cops were just like, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. Does that makes sense. Yeah. Well. Or, or she knew that they would not ask, like, keep asking questions. I mean, that would be an obvious. Because back then they were like, I don't want to hear about that. Yeah, you know, that's a, it's your own personal matter. It's but disgusting. That, but that might be, that's what all it is. It could be what it is. Or she knew that, like, she did it and she knew that they would, just, if she said that, they would just leave it alone. There still has to be way more blood than that. There had to be so much more blood than that. Like, wherever she got washed up had been covered in blood. She would have had to have a day just to clean that up. Yeah. With that much blood? You think, man, yeah. It would have been, like, dripping down her, like, she would have been, <laughs> it would have been, like, going into her mouth. Like, when Maggie came down, she would have been like, why are you, why are you a blood monster? In the basement, two hatches, two axes, and a broken hatchet head are found. Okay. Broken okay. hatchet head. So, they had, it was a hatchet head, but it was the, the, it's, the handle was broken. And was ripped off, yeah. Not there. Yeah, but. That's pretty common. I have those in my arm. Sure, yeah. I mean, you just put a new one in. This is this one hatchet was suspected to be the murder weapon. Was it covered in blood? The broken handle appeared to have fresh dust and ash on the hatchet, and suggesting deliberate tampering to make it seem that it's been unused for a long time. The picture's like, that's odd. Like, why? There's just like, it clearly, clearly, like to them, this hatchet head looked like it was placed there, and like the scene was mess with to make it look as if it had been old. But how did they clean? Again, it would have had been, it would have had to be so bloody. The axes and hatches were not removed from the house for further analysis that day. Like, the handles would have been uh, absorbed so much blood that it would have been soggy. But the handle, the, it was missing its handle. It was, the handle was completely gone? Part of it was. They don't know where it is. But they didn't re- also didn't remove any of the hatches or axes that day. Mm, I don't know. Uncle John did this. Police discovered that the day before the murders, Lizzie tried to buy prussic acid or prusic, which is essentially cyanide. Prusic acid? What? It's cyanide from a pharmacy. <laughs> Why would they use that for? What would Lizzie want that for? Yeah. What was the explanation? Did she get one? She, she claimed it was to clean her furs. Despite being told by the farmers that that's not what it does. <laughs> <laughs> what would she do with that acid, though? Could they clean up blood? They kill her family. Oh, no, the food. But Maybe. But she was sick, too, wasn't she? Apparently. It, but this thing, she was never, the doctor never saw her. Remember the dad was like, get uh, out after Abby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, I think that's what happened. Okay, so cyanide. Would have been used. Mm-hmm. He was going to poison them. Remember, that, like even Abby was like, "I think we've been poisoned. Not food poison, but someone's trying to poison us with the food." But but kill us. Uh, her husband Andrew was not. Some people didn't like him. Well, okay, but she's going to get signed. Where did she get the first batch? Oh, a little, a little tricky there. I don't know. I don't know about that. 
So this, along with the fact that the family had been suffering from mysterious illness before the murders, led the police to conduct an investigation into possible poisoning. Milk from the household and the victim's stomach contents removed during autopsies were tested for poison. No traces of poison were found. On the night that the murders took place, Emmett and Lizzie's friend, Alice Russell, decided to stay with Lizzie. A police officer who was stationed at the house witnessed Lizzie and Alice carrying a kerosene lamp and a slop pail entering the cellar. Both would reappear, and then Lizzie would go back down alone. The officer said he saw Lizzie standing over a sink. They didn't have running water. Or was it the water in the pail? Okay. He sees Alice, Lizzie's friend, and Lizzie go down into the cellar. The slop Ooh. bucket. Yeah, but is it what they usually do? Lamp. It's like that's what they do at night. Like you got, we gotta slop up. You gotta slop stuff up. We well, gotta we, wash our clothes. What were they slopping up in the middle of the night, though? In the middle of the night? Yeah, in the middle of the night. The axes are still down there. Maybe they're cleaning the house because everything got blood on it. There was no blood anywhere, though. Remember? Well, you said there had to be blood in the upstairs. Well, yeah. They, I mean, where the, where the yeah, parents were, but murdered. maybe they were cleaning some stuff. Like maybe you know that. No, I don't know about that. One. I don't think they would let them clean that. And then they, the guy, the police officer, saw Lizzie standing over a sink at some point. How would he see that? He's he's on patrol. There's like 24 hour patrol going around. Around the house so he could see like into the basement? I think apparently. He could be cleaning anything. She could be cleaning her undergarments. Her don't talk about them. So. Maybe. So the next day they finally seized the hatchet. On August 6th, Alice witnessed Lizzie tearing up a dress. Lizzie said she was planning on putting it in the fire because it's covered in paint. <laughs> oh, I see where you're going with that one. She was trying to clean up the clothes she had on. But again... The police never took any of her clothes. Remember, the but, police were just like, they, they did it like super swift, like, hey, everything's, uh, she's sick. We're not going to bother her. Her hair had to been covered in blood. Her entire face you think, man, yeah. would have been stained red. Right. And I think that's why some people are just like, she couldn't have done it. Not because she's a woman or anything like that. but no, like, I think she people were like, wasn't she covered in blood. It would have been evidence, but here's the thing. The police were just like, that first night, when, or the first day it happened, they were so negligent when it came to like looking for stuff like that because they said she was Did they not look in her sick? face? <laughs> <laughs> and say, oh, ma'am, you look red, red, stained red today. But this also goes back to the fact that she's a woman from an up, from a, uh, her pedigree, upper class, wealthy. They, they, they're always bloody faced. They put blood on her to make them smoother. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like, they didn't want to push, push it. Because a lot of, these, apparently a lot of these police were Irish immigrants themselves. So they were like, maybe we, we got to like, maybe tiptoe around this a little bit. Oh, she would have been know, so, man. her hair would have been so bloody. That's her what I thought. Her yeah, right. Life would have been bloody. I don't know. Like the fact they just like this sweep, quick sweep. A quick sweep. There could have been clues all over her room. Well, yeah, like but. This dress that apparently okay. was covered in, in paint. In her room, right. Right. But she's still like, I still think her face, her, you know. Yeah, right. Unless yeah. she was wearing like the dress as a hat. There's no way. <laughs> you yeah. know, like she had the. Uh, Something. There had to be right? so much blood. Yeah. 18 wax and her, on Abby. Yep. Her dad got how 10 many 11, wax? 10 and 11. Okay, yeah. that's so much. That's so much blood. Yeah. Like blood dad's is face splattering is everywhere. Yeah. Dripping. So eventually they're like, okay, we get, uh, they're, we're taking Lizzie in. I think it was the mayor who's like, she's probably guilty. They did a some kind of, it wasn't like a trial just yet, but they did a uh, inquiry. And they're like, yeah, she's, she's probably guilty. So they sent it over to like a higher court. He was eventually arrested on August 11th. Her trial didn't go on to, I think until June of the next year. Did her sister get all the money and stuff? No. Who got it? They both did. So I'm not going to go too much on the trial, but Lizzie was seen as innocent by many in the public because she was upper class, a native, and a do-gooder. She was very active in the community and native, church. Native? As in? Like not Irish born. <laughs> she English. Born in America. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so she's okay. she's not off the boat. But I think that one of the biggest things is that she's a woman. And according to some, and like even her, her defense lawyer said this in, his, in the papers, a woman could not, but would not do such a heinous thing. She would have been too delicate and have the strength to do it. So the defense leaned into that while the prosecution leaned into the fact that Lizzie had a strong dislike for Abby. And it was done out of fear that she might not get her father's inheritance. Right. That's exactly what it was. So her, but her, I don't think she did it. You know what she did? I think John did it. Her, so her family, whether they believed it or not, like these people that like, you know, rest of the Borden family, 
whether they think she did or not, they threw a bunch of money into this to like get her the best defense. Right. Play Again, her name. Yeah. So it could be, yeah. Not necessarily they believed her that she didn't do it, but she was innocent, but like we got a name to. We don't uplift. want a board in the bee right. dragged to the mud. Yeah. Yep. And then the defense, or sorry, the prosecution was like, we, it's been well, not no, so well. it's been rumored to say that like they did not like her stepmother. Right. So, Doesn't mean that she did it. Right. But I think John did it. It wasn't on, on June 20th, June 20th, 1893, almost a year later, after just 90 minutes of deliberation, Lizzie was acquitted of all charges due to lack of forensic evidence lingering to the scene. There was no murder weapon. There's no bloody clothes. It's because John was bloody. Maybe, man. Yeah. Where'd he go? Did you ever follow up with him? Anybody ever follow up with that guy? Yeah. They, like, he was, he had an alibi. He just, he just he was like, out of town. Edmund, like, he was seen. <laughs> he came strolling back in, like, what the oh, heck? Whoa. Whoa. Wowzer. <laughs> Lunchtime. Oh, yeah. everyone's dead. He had an alibi because they set that up. It's perfect. Yeah, right. Perfect alibi. But it is important to know that jury were all men. These women could not be jurors back then. It's interesting to think about what would have happened if there were some women on the, on the you know. On that case, why jurors? Just because, like, to see what they would have thought. I mean, you you'd hope that they wouldn't think they'd be like it's like that thing where like all women hate other women is that type of stereotype. Yeah, so I they're like, I don't know, throw her in jail. She did it. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like it's all ninety minutes, for like two minutes. She's <laughs> she is guilty. And they're like, yeah, yeah. See ya. she lived better than we did. No, I'm yeah. not saying I'm not saying anything kind of like that. I'm just saying it's just interesting because like women couldn't be on juries back then. Not 1892, they couldn't be on juries? Apparently, I, I saw they couldn't, in Massachusetts, women could be on juries until 1951. Whoa. Yeah. That's, uh, ew. That was a, that's not good, Mass. Yeah. Massachusetts. So some, I mean, some people were like, she's this, you know, people in the church are like, she could not do this. She does all this fine community work, all that stuff. And like, the character witnesses type yeah. of thing. Yeah. So Andrew's estate was worth $300,000 back then, which is worth around $400 million today. $400 million. Or $4 million. For $4 million. $300,000 back then, $4 million today. I probably chopped someone up from $4 million. Lizzie and Emma got a big chunk of it. Some of it went to Abby's family. They were finally able to buy their dream house on the hill. Oh. Just like Lizzie always wanted. Shut up. That's, <laughs> is that how it ends? Lizzie, is that credits? Here's the thing. Unfortunately, Lizzie never quite fit on the hill. Never fit in. She kind of became ostracized from her church, constantly hounded by people or shunned altogether. And eventually, children came up with a nursery rhyme. She <laughs> axe murdered them too. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. And when she saw what she had done, she gave her fa- father 41. Both sisters died in 1927, a couple days apart. Okay. So what do you think? I know you're leaning towards the uncle. I think uncle, uncle did oh, it. John Boyd. I think uncle did it. I don't think, it's not that she couldn't do it. I think she didn't do it. Because it was a finely set up plan. He killed it. He killed him, left to go visit Emma. Like he went to visit Emma, right? He came back around, went back into the back door, waited for that whole thing, killed Abby, killed uh, Andrew, then walked. And then, you know, she had blood on her because she was like, oh crap, go, 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 go. Like she was cleaning up or whatever or trying to like help in some way. I don't know about the laughing that that seems like more of like insanity or if she was, if that was true, Maggie actually heard her laughing. That's, that's more of like, okay. Yeah. Crazy. But, but maybe she was like met playing a prank on her dad or something, Yeah, you know? And that's what, that's all that was. She didn't even know mom was dead or she did know mom does. Cause John killed her. Right. Lizzie. I forget what it was, but Lizzie's like, yeah, I, was, I didn't laugh. I forget what she said. I was like, I wasn't even there. But again, her whole thing was like she kept changing her alibis of where she was when all this was going on, so that kind of made her suspicious. But again, there's no, nope, there's no, no more weapon, and there's no blood found other than like on her undergarments. I would love to know if she was like I would have loved to see her face at that point, like right after it happened. Whenever there's no way she had not been covered in blood if she did it. Right, but Apparently, John Boy, he runs out the back door. Covered in blood, jumps in a pond or something. Yeah, keeps walking, strolls back. You know, changes his clothes the down the street. And but like one of the timelines, even Maggie, the the servant said, like he left, he left, and I didn't see him again. Yeah, because he came day. in the back door. She went up to take a nap. Him, yeah. Right. What do you think? 
Wait, did you are you going to theories or is that? No, I mean like that. I mean we've already kind of talked about most of them because like it could have been Emma because well it could have been but like she was out of town. Yeah, the alibis. People saw her. Okay, of course they she saw, was out of town they to saw, get alibis. They saw, they saw John. John, did he? They see John with Emma. No, I don't think so. At one point, Lizzie was like, "Hey, there's this weird wonky eyed. I forget what her, her what term was. I saw a wonky eyed man outside last night." Before the murder, the, before the night before the murders happened, right? Could it have been a random act. You think? That's what she. I think she was going pushing towards. She's like, I saw some mysterious guy whose eyes kind of crazy, wonky eyes, wonky eyes. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's all speculation that might have been Andrew's illegitimate son who came in and did this. But so a, a day or two after the murders happened, they arrested a Portuguese immigrant. Typical Portuguese guys, murder and axe, who pack with axes. Apparently, was that came to the house because he was owed money by Andrew for for work, and Andrew was like, "I don't have your money right now, go away." And so they're like, "Oh, the Portuguese, guys. of course, the Portuguese guys did it. Yeah, this immigrant did it." Okay, so wait, what do what do you think? I th- I think dude, I think it definitely points towards Lizzie, but I do think her friends like. That, that that night when she's just like, I'm going to go uh, downstairs in the middle of the night with this kerosene and, and this mop bucket. And why do that in the middle of the night? Maybe you can't sleep. Like you said, maybe they're just cleaning well, up the house. What time are we talking about middle of the night? What time are we talking? I don't know. Middle of the night. Would but why, have been... why wouldn't Maggie the servant been doing stuff like that, cleaning up? She's puking her brains out upstairs. <laughs> Not at this point, no. Um, I think there's too many things are just like, but it's, they, but there's too many conveniences. Why would, like, would Maggie be doing her laundry for her? Or was that something that the girls did by themselves? I don't you know. they did. No, they I don't think they definitely did. I think they definitely did not do the laundry by themselves. But I don't know. I mean, there's no evidence of that. But they I'm did to clean like, up that room. Yeah. I mean, did the dad like that? Doesn't mean like doing laundry. It just means like go make the bed. That's all. That yeah, means. but like, but it seems like it paints a picture that Andrew made them do their own stuff. So maybe he that's made only, them. I mean, that's the only instance I saw of them having to go do it, stuff like that. So what do you wait? What do you I think? think she did it, but I think her friends and family helped her cover it up. Okay. For sure. That makes sense. What do you think her reason was? I think it was too easy for people to be like, oh, she's a woman. She can't do it. She's this woman of good standing from, you know, good pedigree. She's a white woman. You know, a do-gooder in the neighborhood. There's no way someone could do something like that. What do you What do you think um, her reasoning was? I did see that one of the things was that she might not have been, might have been like, I don't know what the right word would be, like, a, like not a trance, but like in that moment when it happened, she might not have, might not have been in the right frame of mind. Yeah, but she was sick from being poisoned by mutton. <laughs> but no one, like and no one mutton else, sweats. Yeah, but no one else killed anyone. They're all they all got sick. They didn't get a chance to. They're probably all gunning for yeah. each other. They all, they all. I mean, they all went out about and did their bit their business that day. So I don't know. But really, why would she kill her dad? I can understand why she killed her, her, about Abby her evil stepmom. But like, why would she go then kill her dad because he slept, took a nap? You know. Do you think it's that seems weird to me that she would do that to her own? Well, dad. do you think it's one of those things where like? He's going to give away money. He's going to give away our money, our, our inheritance. We have to get rid of him too. Because he's already starting to slip. Like John came by, tried to get some cash. I mean, that's that's only speculative. It's not necessarily that like, people they speculate. There's that. no record he was there? No, he was there, but like. Well, I'm saying like. it's It's been argued about what they actually talked about. It could have been a thing where like they're getting older. They're worrying about their. If, if he, if she, you know, if Abby dies after, if he dies first, why would she I give mean, her dad? Yeah. I don't know. They're not necessarily, I mean, they're working, but I don't think they're, like, Lizzie's definitely doing stuff around town, but I don't know if she's getting paid for it. Right, she doesn't have to. But also, they're not married. I don't think they have income or anyone other than their dad supporting them, so why would they kill their dad? Because then they get it all. They get everything. They wouldn't get it all, though. They would have to know that they wouldn't get it all if the mom, if the stepmom was dead. Why wouldn't they get it all? Well, someone would have to go to the stepmom's family. Because if the mom, if the no, dad no. dies before the stepmom dies, the stepmom gets all the money. Right. But then if stepmom's dead and dad's dead, it goes to the next of kin, yeah. which is them. But why not just kill a stepmom and they still get a chunk of the money? And then you were saying they kill step Because what if another stepmom comes along? Kill that one too and that'd yeah. be a more. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kill another one. No, I think, I think it's just like crime of passion. Like they're like, all right, he's getting old. Get rid of him. Like people do weird stuff for money. Oh yeah. 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 I'm not. Yeah. I mean, maybe 
they didn't like their dad. He seems to be a penny pincher. Like they were living in a house without yeah, I mean, toilets. It, yeah, it was a point of contention between the dad and Lizzie. Right. Maybe it was just like, I don't like my dad. Yeah. I'll murder him too. Apparently during the trial, Emma was like, no, we never said we didn't like our stepmother. But again, she could be, you know, right. full, of, full of crap. She's making this up. I think Lizzie you, did it. And people, you think, people helped her. You think Emma was in up. on it? No, but I think she definitely covered for her. You think Emma planted it in her head? Like, they're going to give away our money. That's what they were doing. They but were, they were inspiring. And then mm-hmm. so she kind of went over the edge and did it. Like, we talked about it, but I'm the one actually the balls to do it. Maybe. What about John? Where's John's role in all this? Do you think he would have point in it? I think it's definitely possible. Yeah. Do you think he got all the factories and stuff or they got everything? No, I think they got everything. Abby's family got a little, little cut of it. I think, well, maybe, you know, maybe he's, maybe John's family did get something to assume. Maybe. Kind of compensation. Okay. Well, Maybe he was like he reconnected with his nieces two years before this happened. Maybe like and they were conspiring ever since. Maybe and he was like following up on what he could do. Yeah, maybe he's probably like, "Hey, you better, you better kill your stepmom. <laughs> you better get give me a get, cut. Get her out of here." Do you think they poisoned them, or do you think it was just like a coincidence? I think the fact that yeah, I think it's a coincidence. Yeah, and also it was uh, the the fact that this pharmacist was like, "Yeah, she came in and asked for this poison." That's that's apparently not ever been fully proven. Yeah, like that seems too convenient. Like they they, you were saying like maybe you got misidentified who that person was. Yeah, because of what's yeah. going on in the national media at this point. Yeah, because it, but this is this whole thing was like the tr- this case and the trial was like this trial of the century at the time, like kind of like our modern day OJ case. Like it was huge. The way do you, do you think she did it and just help people help conspire to do it? I don't think she actually did it. I think she. Had someone else do it because because she wasn't covered in blood. There's too much blood. But why would I she, think Emma why would she, and John would, were involved with it. I don't know if they did it. But why would she take part, knowing that she'd be like the scapegoat for it? She probably didn't know, but she knew she'd be. Oh. She probably thought she could get away with it. Like she probably didn't think it would go the way it did. She probably like she she because she obviously she told a lie to Maggie. She thought that, that people would believe that lie. Yeah. So if she didn't, if she thought that she was going to want to go down for it, she wouldn't have said that. I, I, think think, she, I think it's creepy that Maggie was just like, I heard her laughing upstairs. I was like, she probably was, that's probably from she puking so much. Like, how many things in her <laughs> left in her? It's <laughs> finally her over. It's finally over. Her brain being like, you're going to die. <laughs> you keep eating you're this so mutton. You're so unhydrated. Yeah. I don't like mutton. I don't like the name of like mutton. What is mutton? Is that beef? No, it's a uh, lamb. Sheep. Sheep. Right? Oh, Barf City. I don't know. That's You talk about oh, mutton chops. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's good, but it's, I think it's, I was like kind of really chewy though. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Give me a raw potato and I'll tell him I'm be good. <laughs> I'm gonna take a nice starchy raw potato. Yeah. I don't want no lamb. Yeah, I think it's lamb. Keep yeah. her lamb. Keep her mutton. Give me a potato. Save a mutton, rot a, rot a potato. <laughs> That's potato. what I say. Yeah, those are good. I eat them raw. They're delicious. You remember? I remember we worked together one time. He came to like shift meeting just eating a raw potato. They're good. They're like, like, a, like, a, like an apple. <laughs> Why does no one why does everything that's weird? It's so good. It's a <laughs> Not baked or anything. No, it's like, delicious. Arr, arr, arr. It's, it's crunchy. I think in, I, I could be wrong. I don't know why I think this in French. But the term for apple in French is pretty close to the term for potato in French. Is there a hand fruit? You can't could you be got, wrong. It could be wrong. I mean, think of all the hand fruits. They're all, <laughs> all the hand fruits is, is not a fruit though. I'm saying, like, think of like oh, okay. pears and sure. apples yeah. and neither skin, neither all of the skin yeah. on him. Yeah. Potato fits all of those. Did you at least wash the potato. Well, sometimes you gotta leave the dirt on it because that's where the spices is. Ah, why? You don't. But you, <laughs> listen, <laughs> the spices. Yes, yeah, it gives a little grain, like a little grit. Yeah, you get sick from that, can you? No, no, no. You, a little grit. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, no, no, no. You're fine. For your, for your, your cake eaters over here. <laughs> for, your, for your snowflakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, no the cake eaters. <laughs> You saw Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Um, no, the uh, thing you can eat is a little like whenever the, the uh, little roots are coming out. Yeah, yeah. You got to cut those. They're poisonous. Wow. All right. They give you belly aches. <laughs> <laughs> I used to walk to class in college eating a, a, a potato when we lived up at that one house in grad school. <laughs> it was so good. They're, so, they're delicious. If I didn't know you and I just saw you around me walking down the street. 
eating a raw potato. Those are I'm those. like, that guy's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, if I'm on the same side of the street, I'll, I will walk across the other side of the street and just be like, I don't, I'm staying away from this dude. Like, dude gets nuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they're good. The only thing will be whenever I pull another one on my back, I can go to go to town on another. No, like sometimes I'll eat like uh, probably was actually look crazy was I would use a knife sometimes and cut them and was I was like walking. But I don't, and, and I don't eat the red ones. I eat the brown ones. The brown we're, ones. We're, we're, we're better. Because they're, they're tinier. Bite size. No. They taste, they <laughs> taste worse. Do they? I don't know. I like the brown ones better. They're always like the big honking boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw you I can't do it. pretend. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Try it. It's good. I'm good. Starchy. Thank you, though. I don't, people think I'm weird. It's, it's good. I think there's a lot of evidence to say that you are weird. Yes. Not in a bad way. Everyone's weird. Everyone has their thing. All right. All right. Well, everybody at home, go buy a potato. Just everybody do some homework for me. Just Try a rob. Just one bite. Rinse it's, it off first. Yeah, if you want to be a, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Be a baby about Don't. it. Don't kill people. Eat raw potatoes. <laughs> That's a bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sell that. I think, I think, um, you know, potatoes. It, it could save the planet. It'd be like guns kill people, not raw potatoes. <laughs> it's a bumper sticker. Axes kill people, not, not raw, raw potatoes. potatoes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody out there. Jordan, thank you for bringing this with me. Hey, thanks, Chris. To me, with me. And thank whatever. you all for listening. If you actually stuck around and listened. Yeah. Thanks for not turning us off. Maybe if you got to this point. In any case, if you did get to this point, you are listening to us. You can watch us on on uh, YouTube at Mysterious Pals. You can listen to us if you're watching us on all every podcast platform pretty much out there. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram. I think we're on TikTok. And you can also email us at mysteriouspalsonline at gmail.com. You can find links to all that and links to our email, our email as well as our website at mysteriouspals.com. Uh, that will give you a link to everything and, and all a bunch of information. If you want to send us an email, have a question, have a, a kind of something to, um, what's it? Complain about? Complain about? <laughs> want to cr- criticize us? I was saying more if you have a, a, some, a show that we could do. Oh, yeah, an idea? Suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I have my, my potato today. I'm kind of. <laughs> you got potato hands. <laughs> yeah. I'm They're just, ready to go. You got the potato sweats. Just put, just place a potato right in there. Yeah. My potato claw. Texas kill people, not potatoes. <laughs> Any case, thank you, everybody I'm out like, there. That guy's crazy. <laughs> please, I'll, I'll, please, I'll, I'll, please if I'm say- give us a follow, give us a like, give us whatever you can, subscribe, give us your tired and you're hungry. <laughs> we will be back next week with another show. Thank you, Jordan, again. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, everybody out there. Thanks, everybody out there. Tune in next week for Tune another next week for another show. show. Same mysterious time, same mysterious place, same place. mysterious pals, pals. same mysterious same and mysterious good night. Do they? I don't know. I like the brown ones better. They're always like the big honking boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw you I do can't it. pretend. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Try it. It's good. I'm good. Starchy. Thank you, though. I don't. People think I'm weird. It's, it's good. I think there's a lot of evidence to say that you are weird. Yes. Not in a bad way. Everyone's weird. Everyone has their thing. All right. All right. Well, everybody at home, go buy a potato. Just everybody do some homework for me. Do Try a rob. Just one bite. Rinse it's, it off first. Yeah, if you want to be a, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Be a baby about Don't. it. Do Don't kill people. Eat raw potatoes. <laughs> it's a bumper sticker. <laughs> we'll sell that. I think, I think, um, you know, potatoes. It, it could save the planet. It'd be like guns kill people, not raw potatoes. <laughs> it's a bumper sticker. Axes kill people, not, not raw, raw potatoes. potatoes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody out there. Jordan, thank you for bringing this with me. Hey, thanks, Chris. To me, with me. And thank whatever. you all for listening, if you actually stuck around and listened. Yeah, thanks for not turning us off, maybe, if you got to this point. In any case, if you did get to this point, you are listening to us. You can watch us on on uh, YouTube at Mysterious Pals. You can listen to us, if you're watching us, on all, every podcast platform pretty much out there. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram. I think we're on TikTok. And you can also email us at mysteriouspalsonline at gmail.com. 
You can find links to all that and links to our email, our email as well as our website at mysteriouspals.com. Uh, that will give you a link to everything and, and all a bunch of information. If you want to send us an email, have a question, have a, a kind of something to, um, what's it? Complain about? Complain about? <laughs> want to cr- criticize us? I was saying more if you have a, a some a show that we could do. Oh, an idea? Suggestion. <laughs> Sure. I have my my potato today. I'm kind of uh, got potato hands. Yeah, they're just they're ready to go. Got the potato sweats. Just put, just place a potato right in there. Yeah, my, my potato claw. Texas kill people, not potatoes. <laughs> Any case, thank you everybody out there. Please, please, please give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us whatever you can. Subscribe. Give us your tired and your hungry. <laughs> We will be back next week with another show. Thank you, Jordan, again. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, everybody out there. Thanks, everybody out there. Tune in next week for Tune another in next week for another show. show. Same mysterious time, same mysterious place, same place. mysterious pals, pals. same mysterious, same mysterious night. Good night.